friends, welcome to another weekly energy video. I'm working through how I'm going to be like discussing these this weekly energy. Um, this is going to be an interesting one. This weekend we just had, um, uh, what was it, the sun and Mars doing some interesting stuff. So the, the energy for this weekend has been um, a lot of assertiveness, like going after what you want. Maybe you've seen this, maybe you felt it, or maybe you've noticed um, other people feeling this as well. It was like that hashtag goals sort of thing. So I would say that there's like a, maybe a lot of clarity coming through over the weekend leading into this week. This week is the Mercury retrograde, right? Um, on Tuesday. Um, and that's happening actually in the 10th house in Gemini. Um, the energy of that is sort of like, uh, be careful what you wish for because you just might get it. But actually, um, the danger of that is then you'll be so convinced of your own truth that you won't maybe consider any other truths. So just be aware of that. Mercury retrograde in the 10th house. Yeah. Um, Jupiter moves into Aries as well. That's in the second house of the things that we value. Second house has been highlighted so many times. Um, second house is um, ruled by Taurus. So let me adjust this light. Second house is ruled by Taurus natively. And now we see Jupiter moving into Aries in the second house is what's, ha what's happening there. That is about the call for leaders stepping into power. <laughs> it's about money grabs. What else? There's a lot of enthusiasm, creative ventures, self-confidence and spontaneous trust. Um, actually, I just finished watching an episode of I forget what the show is called exactly, but it's about Anna Delphi. Spontaneous trust. That's that energy. Jupiter into Aries is just like, okay, fine, let's do it. Let's do it. Because there's like a lot of excitement going on as well as, um, you know, Mercury retrograde is known for like miscommunications or something like that. But like that's, that's why it's spontaneous trust is like there's not a whole, um, there's, there's maybe not going to be a lot of, room or time for understanding each other exactly, but the trust is there. Um, the trust is there especially for uh, collectively for those who are working with the following energy. So this is now um, the end of this week going into the weekend is going to be um, the sun conjunct, uh, what is that, south node as well. Um, all, and both of those are hanging out with Uranus. Uh, this is an interesting energy because this is about radical views, individuality. Again, teachers, mentors, leaders creating change. Uranus doesn't care. Uranus just wants things to change. So um, with the sun, right, that's Leo energy. It's happening in Taurus. This is a vibe. This is for sure a vibe um, of this entire period of time, not only eclipse season, uh, but this Taurus season this Mercury retrograde is all sort of pointing to um, um, the same thing, but not the same thing. <laughs> How do I explain that? Um, if you've been heeding the call of like following your heart more or following your intuition, following something that's um, you know has been needing to change or something you just haven't, either you've been ignoring or just like not um, been willing to step into, then that might suddenly happen for you. That's sort of the energy of the, of the week. That's where that spontaneous trust is as well. Maybe you will start spontaneously trusting yourself. And then, you know, we end the week. You know, I'm, I'm sort of looking into the, week, the future weekend now, like the, the 14th here, May 14th. Mars is also aspecting South Node. So, yeah, that's Mars brings energy into anything. Um, that's happening in Pisces in the third house. Again, more intuition. I think that there's, this is all about overcoming challenges. This week, this whole eclipse season is going to be about things getting, becoming more clear as to where your challenges actually are. So you can connect your frustration or any feelings of frustration, um, stagnation, and, and like connect that to your own um, inaction, um, your own 
accept, you know, not acceptance, but like, yeah, like, um, complacency, inaction or complacency. Um, and you will realize and many people may realize where they have the power to change things. And if you don't realize it, the change, if that's not the flavor of for you this week, it might just happen suddenly or it might, it may become illuminated through the subconscious. Key takeaways for the week then. <laughs> Mercury retrograde, be careful what you wish for. Seek higher truths. Um, be careful what you wish for because you just might get it. As in, you'll be so convinced of your own truth, you'll stop seeking other truths. So the message for this Mercury retrograde, in my opinion, is to just keep seeking larger truths. Not just larger truths, other truths. There can be many truths that are all true. And the the fire energy that's been with us the past month or so, um, especially this past weekend, has been highlighted of um, assertiveness, confidence, people going after what they want, you know, and, and Venus has been doing a little dance. There's maybe been some romanticism, um, which will continue uh, next week as well. It's like everything, every action here is connected to some sort of like life purpose. So everything is maybe just feeling very intense. Um, next week's video, we'll get into full moon eclipse in Scorpio. So like, just make a note of that because that's where it's all going. And who knows, like the, the, they say that what happens in these two weeks are really indicative of something that will be with us for quite some time. So pay attention to how you're using your energy. All right, we'll do a tarot reading just to reflect on the energies we just discussed and see what other messages want to come through that I did not make notes on. Just something more intuitive. I've got my Moonology deck. Oh, that wanted to split twice almost. Nothing is yet set in stone. Yeah, we know that. Full Moon Scorpio is actually on the bottom again, even though I was going to pull from the top. Full Moon Aries, New Moon Libra. A fiery climax approaches, yes, and a new romantic cycle begins. Yeah, so it, it sounds like this is picking up right where we left off in that energy reading that... Um, People are feeling a bit more bold. I don't know if you've noticed, but um, there is a time when, for everybody, when waiting doesn't really suit anyone anymore. And it's better to be bold and to be forward um, and to shoot your shot. So that's what's happening here. Nothing is yet set in stone because a lot of people are shooting their shot things will become intense because they'll be, you know, in the most positive way, um, as well as potentially negative, you know, depending on the outcome of said venture, um, intense emotions. Libra is here. Libra is here to remind us to just, um, practice being balanced. <laughs> Libra is not good at being balanced. Libra strives for balance. Also take a look at that. Actually, this is, um, I'm sorry, I just realized this is highlighting a moon, a macro moon cycle because the full moon in Aries and the new moon in Libra, that is, they're exactly six months apart. Do you know when the full moon in Aries is? I lied, they're not, they are not six months apart, they're two weeks apart. Aries and Libra are opposite signs. That's what's showing up here. We just had new moon in Aries, sorry, new moon in, yeah, new moon in Aries and the full moon in Libra last month. So that means March, what was that? That was, um, Oh my gosh, when was that? I'm losing my mind, y'all. 
Or maybe it's just been a while since I made a video, so I, I don't know my own pace. What? I could just look it up. Of course, the full moon was in April. The full moon in Aries was in April. So in August, right? August, we'll have this. August is being highlighted here. The full moon in Aries and the new moon in Libra. It's actually the new moon Libra happens first. And then the full moon in Aries. That's August season. So what are you, what are you going to invest in right now? If like, if this whole summer is malleable, if like, if you could use this summer to create whatever you wanted, um, by the way, the Mercury retrograde we just discussed is happening until like Ju beginning of June ish. Um, the Pluto retrograde that happened last week. If you watched that last video, we talked about it. That's happening through, yeah, the end of summer. And the Pluto retrograde in Capricorn is all about observing and assessing how are you going about doing the things that you are doing. So for you, it could be one or both of those questions. What am I going after? Is this really what I want to be doing? Um, if so, why am I doing it this way? That's what the mutable moon here is about. Nothing is yet set in stone. And so August, the month of August is being highlighted here around the full moon in Aries time. So um, I feel like right this, we're taking messages for right now and this right now is eclipse season. I kind of feel like whatever you set yourself up for this month in the month of May will be your your trajectory for the summer and then you'll reap some some benefits in August which is like five months not exactly six months well we have the two of Pentacles underneath okay this is about prioritization this is about juggling a lot of things we also have the two of swords underneath so again, like this inability to make a decision of prioritizing something, maybe not having all of the information. And then I'm also getting here the five of wands underneath. This is about white noise, um, distractions, um, other people's opinions. Okay, so this is about really clarifying your own voice, clarifying your own desire, clarifying, clarifying, clarifying. Maybe it's also about taking some respite from um, expectations that that external um, just people or circumstances put on you, um, societal pressure or whatever. I think it would be wise to sit in your own energy for this one as you make decisions about what you're going to be doing. We have the devil. <laughs> Winter. Yeah. Um, three of wands, page of wands, um, three of, pen uh, sorry, eight of pentacles in the middle. That's about work. This could be about work related. What are you going to be working on? The wheel of fortune. What comes around goes around. Uh, ace of pentacles working towards a brand new opportunity. Page of cups. Oh man. Oh my. Oh me. Oh my. And the two of cups at the end. So... I see how if you are focused on work, I feel like this is going to be really positive because what you put into your work, you'll get out of it. All the seeds you've planted will grow between now and August. So um, it might be that the energies happening are just suited for um, luck happening. I mean, Jupiter is luck, right? Ju Jupiter is the, the planet of luck and it's entering Aries this week. Make wishes, honestly, because you, you might just get lucky. I don't know. Um, and that is happening in the second house as well. 
right? So that's our, our money, wealth, values ruled by Taurus. We talked about this, I know. So I'm just like reiterating how all of this is like really linked together. Because what I see here is devil. This could be Capricorn. Um, Capricorn is really the only zodiac sign I see here. I know that Ace of Pentacles could be any earth sign. So I have earth, fire, and water. That's who I have on the table. And remember what I was saying about meditation or just like sit, sit in your own energy on this one? That's what's happening here with the Devil and Winter card. I don't know if you have felt it, but I have felt it. Um, the past week or two may have been challenging. There may be things that have been challenging for us. That's what the Devil represents. Um, the Devil is about freedom, but um, in another sense, it's about the things that bind us. It's the things that we're tied to, um, maybe because they're comfortable, even though they may be toxic. The devil is just about, yeah, you ever heard of like the, the saying, like dancing with the devil? Like you might be having a good time, but it's not really leading anywhere. And this is maybe ultimately detrimental for you. So take some time out. The, the winter card here is about building confidence, spending time with loved ones, really nurturing yourself and getting healthy. I sort of see this as like a detox from the devil a little bit. you do that, you'll be ready for growth. The Three of Wands then is about um, having um, everything you need, your bags are packed, you're ready to go, and you're ready for growth. For me, this represents Jupiter, right? This could represent Jupiter, for example, the energy of growth in that way. And then what comes right after that is the Page of Wands. The Page of Wands is about a brand new beginning. This is about an adventure. It is about growth. It's about seeing the potential of something. So seeing the potential, we work. Seeing the potential, we get to work. And the Wheel of Fortune, I, I believe, is just here to say that it, it's the karma card. It's the card of change. It's a card of cycles. So either a cycle will be closing out and a new one will be beginning as it relates to your work. Or this could just mean that you've you've got a vision and an idea that you're working on that will come to fruition precisely the amount of energy that you put into it you'll you'll get what you got at the same time though i i personally believe that energy doesn't come through the same channel so like i could sit here and work on my tarot for forever but like you know the channel's not going to blow up overnight do you know what i mean it's so in that sense, it is a little bit about luck, but it's also about receiving the energy back for my efforts here through other channels, the people I interact with, the readings that I do privately, yada, yada. So it's not tit for tat. It's not because I'm making videos and putting them online that the YouTube is where the energy comes in through. In a similar way, the Wheel of Fortune is not saying that you work hard on your business and your business will flourish. Not necessarily. Not necessarily. Maybe eventually. But I think what you are learning, the skills that you're learning, are preparing you for who you need to be when this new thing comes. This golden ticket. I always think of Ace of Pentacles as like a golden ticket. It's like the thing you've always wanted. It's a brand new thing. And if it's not brand new, it feels brand new because it's got like this new energy. So not only do we have the Ace of Pentacles, but we have two pages of wands. And anytime there's a page, it's like a fresh energy too. And by the way, you also got the Two of Cups here. So remember when I was talking about a little bit of romanticism, um, energy, romantic energies that are sort of flying around. We'll talk more about that next week with the full moon in Scorpio, but it says here, um, you know, the new moon in Libra was highlighted, a new romantic cycle begins. You know, sure, it could be. But especially with this card, I'm just noticing how the, the dress is the same color as the, oops, where am I? The dress is the same color <laughs> as this background. The Two of Cups is more than any other card, in my opinion, 
sort of like a soul partnership card, the truth of the soul's exchange. So this could be a romantic partner coming in. Especially if you're not expecting it. This is because the Page of Cups is expect the unexpected. Um, but it is also about, you know, wonder and, and expressing um, wonder for the world and for things in general. Seeing things as new makes them as new as if they were new. I had to say that. Um, alternatively, this doesn't have to be love romantic. It could be that collectively we're finding a mode of expression that considers um, our needs with those of the people around us in a very like holistic, humanistic way. Uh, it's possible. It's definitely possible. Um, I feel like if you are doing the work and you are um, getting rid of the noise here, trying to get, trying to clear your mind, honestly, and to clear your mind, you also have to sort of clear your plate, as in don't be constantly having something to do. I think a good way to get through eclipse season is to find some quiet time and to really become clear about what it is that you want to see happen. We have the King of Wands hanging out underneath as well. I know I pulled a few cards from underneath the energies because they were just being pretty loud. The King of Wands is, he doesn't need any validation. This is about following your inspiration. This is about leadership. Whoop. <laughs> That's never happened. The card just fell off from the bottom of the deck. Um, yeah. So the leader, so the King of Wands and the leader and the, and the seed card. What was it that I wrote about that? That was a thing. The call for leaders stepping into power. Self-confidence, creative ventures, and spontaneous trust. That's what that was about. So, uh, right, the thing about the King of Wands, though, is that he is very uh, believable. So, if you, you yourself may be stepping, stepping into your power in a way that may look like you can recognize your influence... Right, you're becoming the King of Wands sort of in that way. And or you're recognizing when uh, you see that in somebody else. Somebody is stepping into their power, they have leadership, there's a creative venture that maybe you're a part of, you play an important role in, you have a special skill in delivering a piece of it. Mm -hmm. So there's definitely a lot of things being built this, this season. Absolutely. With Aries in the dust, right? And now we're in Taurus. It's like, okay, everyone's back in the game. Now we got to find a very stable rate in which to do our work. Stable rate meaning what is um, like, yeah, what is um, sustainable and what is sustainable is what's in the heart. Because if you're passionate about the thing that you do and you feel really strongly that this is the right thing to do, there's no way that thing could fail. That's what this Two of Cups is about. So, see, it could be romantic, right? But I'm also more so getting that it could just be um, people who understand each other, who share a similar goal or mission, who feel similarly. All right, just few cards to close it out. Oh, yeah. I love this message. <laughs> the Four of Swords, Four of Swords, the King of Swords, and Sasquatch. This is great. <laughs> Remember I said kings don't need any validation? This is about literally resting and taking your time. This is about meditation taking respite and just like 
I mean, I even love that they're, it looks like they're, they're on a retreat, even though they're like sleeping or something. Um, this is about meditation, resting to the point, resting your mind, honestly, too, that you're so clear about your thoughts. You don't need any validation um, to point you in the right direction of um, where your mind is leading you. The King of Swords, this, the swords are all about our intellect and our nervous system. So the King of Swords has mastered at the highest level his intellect and now can create new ideas. Is creating lots of good new ideas. <laughs> And Sasquatch is here to remind us that, like, sure, wild is good. Being a little wild is good. It's fun. And we shouldn't maybe lose the, um, any sense of spontaneity or playfulness or fun. But Sasquatch is here to also say that too wild is, in fact, too wild. So are you um, partying a lot, drinking a lot, imbibing, I guess is the word, a lot? Um, indulging a lot to the point that you're maybe losing sight of uh, what it is that you really want and what you're trying to imagine is a possible future or is it just wild enough to get you there that is a good question that is a good question that you can ask yourself and I will ask myself and then we'll get through this week and then we'll be back for the next one. Thank you so much for watching. See you guys later.